Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the latest edition of Seeing Life and Sports Betting Operate TV. My name is Peter White, now in this media, and today we're pleased to have Martin DeKniff, founder of Metric Gaming. Welcome, Martin. Hi, Peter. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. And I understand you're actually in Las Vegas, and I'm in the beautiful establishment called Park Lane uh, Casino. Uh, so how's Vegas treating you? <laughs> Not too bad, apart from the heat. It's... Uh... It's been a record this summer, like July was 51 degrees Celsius, so it's, it's, it's a sauna, it's been a sauna this summer, um, but it's it's fading away now, we're getting to the best time of the year, September to November, it's just paradise here in Vegas. Yes, agreed, agreed, and I say I, I've had a lovely walk through uh, St. James's and uh, Green Park on my way to uh, Focus Casino, and I really appreciate uh, the management here at the Park Lane for allowing me use of their VIP room. Um, if we could commence this interview with um, um, the first question, which is uh, what I like to ask a lot of uh, people I interview, is um, uh, if you give yourself a short in uh, introduction and also tell us about uh, you know when and uh, how you got started in the industry. Yeah, so I actually came from the from the punter side to begin with. I I've been a predictive analysis uh, since high school. I am. Um, I played a fair amount of bridge, uh, was very successful in that, uh, played a fair amount of poker, uh, had a lot of success in that before I retired. And then uh, sports betting was always kind of the, the main thing in handicapping uh, the outcomes of, you know, primarily football games, but also tennis and golf and, and a few other sports that we were specializing in. Um, so I moved to Las Vegas about 20 years ago, uh, essentially to retire. Um, start a family here and um, I guess I got tired of being retired after five or six years seven years maybe and, and I had a lot of friends uh, contact me from back in Europe to say that I needed to get back in the saddle again um, because sports betting had taken a kind of different dimension with uh, mobile betting starting and uh, a lot of the data um, through Sport Radar, Bet Genius and you know, Perform Media Group and what have you it was just so much better quality. So um, there was a way to maybe do this, you know, from a distance. As you can imagine, when I used to do this in 22, 23, 20, 20, 2004, you, could, um, uh, you couldn't you watch the games from, you know, United States and eight or nine hour time difference was, was the challenge as well. So that's kind of why I decided not to, to do anything anymore. But that had changed in 2013. And... Um, uh, but now I had a bunch of kids, and I kind of didn't want to go back to professional betting again. So I started to look at the ecosystem of sports betting to see, you know, if there was any problems that I could solve, uh, you know, from a business side. And I uh, did some research and uh, thought that uh, there was very little innovation done in sports betting. And then I had a an idea of a concept, which is now called micro betting, uh, but it's very early with that. Uh, we had metric called a super live, which is kind of instant gratification uh, sports betting. So, so what it ended up being after like a year of doing some planning and some research about this is that we wanted to kind of come in with a new uh, breath of fresh air of uh, of this super live betting then. Uh, and to give you a few examples that we wanted to offer people to, to bet a pot in golf or we wanted um, people to bet on an at bat in baseball or minute-to-minute -minute markets in, in, in football and so forth. So, so kind of the value proposition we set, out, set us all out to solve in the early days was, one, was technology that could support this very, you know, debit and credit in real time, uh, a lot of information going back and forth um, because of the nature of these markets. But then also uh, the predictive analysis element of it, because this was uncharted territory. No one else was doing this. And, and since, you know, even Radar and Genius and what have you weren't really kind of uh, resulting these kinds of events, we kind of had to um, have some sort of clearing resulting mechanism as well uh, to, to provide. So that's, that's kind of how I got into it. Uh, uh, so this is 2013, 2014. Um, and, uh, you know, after having a prototype into it, we, we got some good commercial validation for the product. Um, and that's, that was kind of the, that was kind of the genesis of everything. Of course, things have gravitated in a different direction since then. Uh, we, we kind of exited the, 
the micro betting space in about 2016 and, and wanted to build a full sports book platform instead. Um, and that kind of really came out of us thinking that we have solved much bigger problems with this technology for uh, instant gratification betting and thought that we could be really relevant in the full value chain of infrastructure sports betting platform solutions. So that's kind of that's kind of the long story short um, to how I got into this. Um, and of course, in the early days, we were, I think in 2016, we were maybe like 30, 35 employees. Today, fast forward in the tape to 2024, about 140. So uh, a little bit of a different animal altogether today. Oh, impressive. I mean, what, what other solutions and services does Metric Gaming deliver and what makes them unique? Yeah, so, so today, um, we, we have built uh, a native cloud-based architecture uh, uh, sportsbook platform. So you can look at the technology as a, a kind of a real enabler. Uh, you know, essentially, you have, a, you have a carte blanche. You can do whatever you want, really. Uh, that's what we're here for, that the technology should support you, not the kind of the other way around. And, and, and we have a full suite of products. You know, we have a managed trading service solution. Uh, what we offer our customers. So we do all the trading and the risk management and what have you. And, and then we also have uh, some, you know, interesting partnerships. We have a, a partnership with a company called Racebook HQ, RBHQ, uh, that is do, doing horse racing as a service as well, which is, uh, um, yeah, I would say not to go too far, but I think that they're probably at the, you know, the top, top three or maybe the best in the market in, in what they're doing when it comes to horse racing. And then we pride ourselves at, at doing really proper uh, custom analytics. Um, and, and, and I guess I guess the question is kind of how we use this. You know, it's very focused on on our customers' numbers then, of course, and and accelerating their growth and tailoring it to their needs. Uh, in, a, in essence, being very collaborative uh, in, in our approach. Yeah, because that brings you on to the next question, really, because. Um, how significant is uh, the relationship with operators and decision making and implementation process when they say yes, we're going to take on metric gaming solution? Yeah, I think where we are different, I think uh, compared to others, is that you know other firms might use you know a consultative service as as an add on as an option. Uh, for us, that is that is included and. Uh, what we want to try to be here is true collaborative. And what we want to do is to replicate your sports book as it is your in-house solution, but in this case, then uh, outsourced. Um, and, and we want a deep, deep understanding of our operators, our brands, businesses, and how their ecosystem uh, works. And uh, we want to look at ourselves as a, as a true extension uh, in, in, in you know, obtaining the objective of getting to their specific goals uh, because we understand that every every single operator is different um there's not a one size fits all here and um and i think that's that that's incredibly important uh so uh, I, I mean i guess some of the operators the brands the reason that some of them have taken an, an in-house approach meaning that they have built their or bought their uh, proprietary technology sportsbook platform is because they think that they are not getting that kind of autonomy in their decision making, uh, if they outsource it, and and I guess that's to some extent an indictment on the on the B two B industry uh, that that the operators and brands have taken that that approach, and we we want to change that. We think that that there is an opportunity now because of the technology we built that we can actually collaborate uh, in a in a very profound way with the with the operators, and uh, uh, this should be very cost effective for them. There's, there's no need for them to. Um, to have a proprietary sportsbook platform, um, so I guess, I guess that's kind of where we where we differ. I think. I mean, I, obviously, you know, we're in a era of rapid change in sports betting in the industry, and it's growing massively still. And, uh, and from your aspect, I mean, this it, how have you been so transformative, it, it, transformational? Let's say as a CEO in this era of rapid change at Metric Gaming. Yeah, I think maybe the, the most credit maybe I deserve is maybe then that I actually did pass on the baton uh, <laughs> yeah. to to actually to actually people that actually know what they're doing. No, uh, 
as a software true, true to that, where uh, we were very fortunate within Metric uh, to bring in some some uh, uh, some really B two C experts. As I mentioned, uh, you know why some companies have taken a technology in house is because the B two B companies they were working with couldn't solve their problems, or they really understand their problems, and maybe didn't have a technology that that enabled them to solve those problems either. Um, so uh, you know, essentially, we took some people in from Betfair, you know, from Coral, uh, uh, you know, William Hill. A uh, lot of the PLCs in in the UK, and and we basically said to them, okay, if you had a carte blanche and and you wanted to build a technology that that could, you know, actually look at things from a B two C lens, how would we do it? Uh, and and then we spoke to our investors, and especially during COVID, this was a discussion because we didn't know, you know, the ramifications of COVID. We essentially decided to pause any other endeavor that we had. And essentially double down on this new technology solution and commit to over a forty million dollar investment on this R and D project wow. uh, for the very minimum of, of three years. Yeah, so it's 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 been a it's been a an onerous, a tedious, and very difficult process to go through this. You know, to actually get to get this solved, and of course, this costs a lot of money. Um, so so I think it was it was a brave decision. That was the right one, uh, and and you know to come back use use kind of. Jobs kind of uh, uh, talk is that you know we wanted people that were smarter than us uh, to kind of lead the lead the way, and, and and that's what we've done, and 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 it's it's worked out perfectly for us right now. I mean, we've launched a, the platform here a few months ago, uh, and and it's incredibly impressive. This new platform, it's uh, we're more proud of what what has been done. So you know. The credit I want to take is that at least that I supported that vision and and and. Uh, uh, we passed the baton over to uh, some younger people uh, in in a business uh, that had a clear idea and vision of where they had, this needed to need this needed to go. So taking on from your comment about the, 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 this platform, um, and for the stakeholder standpoint, for those that uh, do not have the financial uh, power of big operators, how complex is it to operate? Yeah, no, it's it's it's. So, so what it what it is here is that th this platform is a true multi-tenant solution, and what that means is that every single tenant is independent from one another, and that could be in different territories, but it could also be within the within the same territory. Meaning that you want to run a you know a multi-brand solution, uh, and you can even go in and configure uh, solutions on a customer level where. Um, you have a single customer can have a different ex a different experience, um, and and essentially what that does is that is it gives you you know a great quality a product at a much much cheaper price, um, so you can operate at scale, uh, and it's kind of a you know from a, a ground and up kind of approach, and, and um, um, the technology is very stable, and, and, and essentially you, you just pay for what you want. I mean, we can start at a very kind of basic level, but if you have aspirations and ambitions and and you want to kind of gear up that you get unit economy in what you're doing in one territory, then you can just you know, kind of copy and paste and do that in a different territory. So it's, it, it's a very flexible and dynamic solution where um, it, it kind of really customizes your offering to your budget. So, and of course, since we are a, a, a managed trading service solution as well, um, we 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 handle all that stuff for you. So you know we have an operator in in, in the Netherlands, which is a casino uh, first operator, and have very limited experience when it comes to sports betting. So then they put a lot of onus on us in, in essentially running the sports book for them. But then we we have, might have other brands that that are looking into maybe uh, you know run the decisions more in how they they do the sports book and and how much money they're willing to put behind it. So. It, it's 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 it it really depends on 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 who you are and, and what your aspirations and ambitions are. I see. I mean, um, I mean, is outsourcing a key differentiator when it comes to operators saving money? Would you say? Yeah, I, I think so because I mean, like it, you know, maybe paradox, you know, maybe some paradox to, to to some extent is not intuitive at least that you, you would assume that B two B companies that are doing this for a living. Uh, and 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 servicing, you know, dozens and you know a lot more operators sometimes, depending on the company you are. That 
you should really benefit from being focused on the R and D and have a very kind of singular focus on on the sports book um, and benefit benefiting from all the intelligence you would have with all these operators that you're working with uh, and understanding their needs and innovation and and and, and what have you. Um, uh, but in essence, if you look at kind of maybe the if you look at look, look at Bet three six five, who maybe has the best reputation on on the market in in kind of solving stuff in house, and it's been very difficult, I think, for some of the B two B companies to 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 meet up to that three six five standards. And that's kind of, I guess, that what we are saying is that you know, of course, the the, the budget of Bet three six five, what they spend on on technology and product, uh, you you you. Sh- I think it would be fair to assume that that a B2B company should actually be better at that because they have this singular focus and should be able to kind of get a better result, better outcome for their partners than someone who is just doing this by themselves. So, so I think in the, the US, the US market is a bit of a microcosm for uh, for this because what, what, what Metric wants to do is to some extent be some sort of antidote on very extensive customer acquisition or attention. Um, and, and 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 thus kind of maximize maximize lifetime value of the of the user, and um, it, it should it should be it, it shouldn't be about how much money you actually de- uh, you're deploying with something. It's kind of the uh, you know how you use the money, um, and um, right now in the United States, I would say it's it's a marketing war more or less. Uh, and it's less of a war on product and pricing, uh, meaning uh, odds and uh, other other things that are are important or uptime for in play or what whatever else. Yeah. Um, so I guess what we are saying is, if you take a metric solution, uh, your product is going to be at the level of 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 the you know the tier one operators like Betsy six five whatever, uh, and, and accordingly. Um, you don't have to spend uh, all this above the line marketing and 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 what have you. Um, it's kind of how you deploy the capital, in what ways you do that. Uh, that is more important than actually the amount of money you're spending. Um, so I think that you know the U.S. market is is a perfect example of, um, you know, you have this duopoly manifesting in the United States. It's kind of been the survival of the fittest. Uh, with Fandle and DraftKings, uh, and and the others, for being formidable brands like Caesars and MGM and 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 what have you, really struggling uh, because they can you know, can meet the standards of uh, of the the the, the Formula Two on the product side. Uh, well, there's a gap there's a gap there, and since the other two are also stronger when it comes to the marketing, I think. Uh, then it, it, it's it's really challenging when you don't have something to kind of antidote um, the kind of the marketing spend, and that's what we are here for. Uh, that we kind of we, we can we can make you leapfrog your your competition, but by really being really smart in how you spend your money. Okay, I mean, do you keep track of customers and see how? Um, so, so you, do you have any kind of statistics on success rates and things like that? Yeah, I, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, customer analytics is something you know really important uh, for us. Or, or are you speaking specifically about the uh, about the brands themselves as our customers, or is it the end user you're referring to? Well, um, the brands, the brand. Yeah. So, so this is this is very early days, uh, and I think it would be disingenuous for me to kind of represent something. Uh, you know, we're such a limited sample size. As I said, we we went live with a platform in the Netherlands in May, and we had another brand during the Euros, and now we had another brand in the UK um, in October. Um, what what I what I can say thus far is that yeah, it has been very impressive, both from a performance standpoint. You know, we've had zero downtime, which is which is like un, unheard of. Yeah, going live with a customer. Going going live with a customer, we haven't had any outages at all, and yeah. uh, unless it's been scheduled maintenance, or whatever, like some upgrade for like ten or twenty minutes. But but it's it's, it's just really incredible how well and how robust uh, the platform has been, and and I think our our customers uh, that we're working with right now are very happy 
uh, with how it's performing. And and I think that uh, um, when they see that, there's going to be a lot more excitement about maybe putting more capital behind it too, because it really is this difference maker in saying we we don't have to feel that we are we are four feet eleven uh, short uh, compared to the the, the tier ones. Uh, we can actually be six three six four as well, uh, and um, we we can spend our money very in a very clever way, and, and we're not going to have any gaps between us and them when it comes to the product. Maybe even the opposite. That actually what metric has enables us to to differentiate and innovate in, in a very very yeah, scalable way. Now, actually, what you just said that brings me on to the quote from your CEO Keith Hayes. Um, if I just read it out to you, um, it is uh, our commission third party analysis indicates that our technology could realize as much as 300 million incremental annual revenue for some of the largest operators. That's a, a highly impressive amount of money. Can you elaborate for our viewers benefit on this quote? Yeah, ab absolutely. And of course, it sounds like in a, in a really big number. Uh, and, and it is, of course. Uh, and I think he's he's overstated the number to be honest with you this is a little bit the kind of the nature of the beast i'd say because a lot of the big plcs and the tier ones um yeah the, the operate multi-jurisdiction the ultimate multi-brand and also multiple tech stacks and that puts a lot of cost on product development because you know if let's say you have a big plcs in the uk that have spent hundreds of millions of pounds on a product development uh, to have their product um in a market leading category in the UK. And they have not been able to reuse what they built in the UK. Uh, you know, let's say they need to go to Germany or they need to go to Brazil or they need to go to other, other territories. And they've ha had to hire uh, B2B companies uh, to enable uh, launches in those kinds of territories because their existing tech stack that they're using in the UK market uh, isn't scaling into these other territories. So, um, so, so, but it actually kind of exemplifies this kind of an inability, uh, you know, uh, to leverage kind of the group product properties uh, in, in, a, in a kind of an elegant and in a, in a meaningful way. So there's been more kind of ad hoc solutions, I think. Uh, they kind of had to shoehorn themselves um, uh, and, you know, put some lipstick on, on things in, in various territories uh, uh, what they're in. Uh, so what we could offer is a massive improvement of economies of scale uh, and to give them, you know, real market share in every single um, jurisdiction that it, they're that into. into. And, and the benefit of doing that is from a central location. We can offer this multi-tenant, you know, complete configurability in a different offering uh, in every single territory. But the benefit of still doing the product development from one central location. Um, and, and, and accordingly, we become more leaner and, and, and more dynamic in that sense. So I think, it, you know, the nature of the beast for all these big companies that are they're operating, many of them in the same way, um, uh, is that if we were the solution, uh, I'm sure that that number actually 300 million is a low number, not a high number. So, um, I mean, with, with the growth continuing in sports betting, um, and obviously, we've now got esports coming more into, you know, the, the, the betting sector. Um, is this your software providing um, an entry level for new entrants into the industry in the coming years? Because it is, you know, as you mentioned before, some of the big operators are going for market share. They are looking to dominate. I mean, is there still room? Is it still possible? Oh, absolutely. I think it is. I think it is. And I, I and I think the reason for that is that because of the sequencing to, to, to a large extent where, um, you know, again, I'm using the U.S. and the U.S. was more kind of a land grab. I think that the, the focus points in the early days of the market after PASPA was repealed was uh, actually being able to do business in that market, to be compliant, to have a license, to have a partner, market access agreements and and uh, technology and product. Uh, wasn't even in the back seat; it was in the trunk. Um, and then it, it kind of matured into then becoming this uh, customer acquisition marketing war of you know just accumulating customer databases as best as you could after you've been able to solve um, the first piece of the equation. Uh, and that we're still there right now, I think, where um, 
you know, to some extent, you've been seeing some of this musical share scenario that I used to call it, where a lot of big companies had aspirations to get into the United States and and now they need to kind of off ramp uh, their solution. You know, Supergroup has left the US, uh, Kindred left the US, uh, I, I, Betfred seems to be living in the US, uh, you know, Wynn pulled the plug in the US uh, because they couldn't really compete. Um, of course, they can compete on brand and Savin is the running operations or whatever, but it was really difficult. Um, to be up against the Fandlos and the Raf Kings of the world uh, with 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 an inferior uh, technic technical solution, it, you know. Remember, I'm repeating. They need to get into the market, and then it was about marketing their product, uh, and uh, that was a very costly, you know, endeavor. Uh, but at some point here now, and I think we started maybe see the kind of the first uh, first inning or warm up pitching that actually ultimately uh, great tech. It enables you to build great product, uh, and also to to compete on on pricing, uh, and and uh, the average of growing in play. You know, betting as the game is unfolding, uh, and even even the micro betting aspect of that uh, it is is going to be at the forefront. So I think that that the timing for Metro to get into the market right now with this new uh, technology stack uh, could could not be better. I think because. Um, you know, operators that you know need need to to leapfrog the competition, and are now realizing that actually the tech that they are using, uh, a lot of times that are 10, 15, 20 years old, that need to be kind of you know a change. You need you kind of need to get to the kind of the root cause of the issue. Like you you know, if you're trying to make changes you know around the edges, um, that that's not really you know cutting it. Uh, you can come up with like some small stuff, but at the end of the day, you need to get into the heart of the issue uh, and the root cause of the issue. And the root cause of the issue is is uh, tech. It's just it's as simple as that. You have to have great tech, and if you don't have that, you're not going to be able to compete. So I th so I think that um, absolutely uh, some of the larger operators that that had to go through the sequence or or decided not to be so patient. I I guess is of course somebody's. Operators could have taken the view that we're not going to go into somebody's very quote unquote sexy territories. We have to be more patient because uh, we have to have great tech, um, uh, and that's maybe take six or seven or eight years before we get there. But we have to wait because otherwise we're just going to throw money away. Uh, and and I think a lot of the, the the you know strong companies, great brands, are facing that reality right now in the United States. So so I, so I do think that the uh, I think the jury is way out uh, uh, to potentially who could be the winners. Even in the United States, uh, I think that could be true. Uh, perhaps not not so much maybe in the in the in the retail market that that all brands are operating right now, but but I think that there is there is um, th there's a little bit of a you know hidden market too that is unserviced. And I think that's that's not only in the United States, it's global too where we speak it about servicing the, the higher end of the market, um, not speaking about people betting tens of thousands of dollars and that kind of thing. I'm just saying that, that there's there's a way to satisfy people that want to bet for maybe a little bit more, maybe a little more often, and 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 want to have a more seamless experience. And 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 because of the uh, the brands being so risk averse today, uh, there isn't really an opportunity for anyone to do so. So I think I think we bring some. Some unique elements to the table uh, where you can where you can look at an incremental um, TAM. Well, so I mean, Central and South America is um, doing rather well, and obviously with with Brazil opening up. I mean, is that some you know is your organization promoting itself to potential you know stakeholders in that market? Uh, I, I, absolutely, absolutely. I think. Um, Specifically, Brazil. We we are having some real interesting discussions with um, some some brands that, that want to have a, a a different kind of solution and um and also the kind of the, the, the nature of the beast there too is that you know Brazil is going to have a different way of tax taxation. They're going to have a different way of taxation for the for the end user. Um, and um, this this kind of configurability that we offer uh, even on the customer level. Um, it, it, it's 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 very unique. Um, 
uh, and would enable any brand that uses the metric platform to to, to kind of really compete uh, on 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 product and 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 the user experience at the end of the day. Um, so yes, absolutely, we we are very excited about um, how the global market, you know, is growing. And then finally, question is um, for viewers that like to actually meet and, and see people and, and be demonstrated, um, you know, examples of it. What shows will you be at in the autumn this year? <laughs> yeah, that's that might be a disappointing answer, uh, but uh, we take a little bit of a different approach uh, when it comes to our, when it comes to our marketing. Yes, we will be in Barcelona for uh, for 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 ice. Uh, in the beginning of next year, we also be a G2 here in Las Vegas in the next couple of months. Uh, but we're not, uh, we take a different approach from exhibiting. Uh, we're going to have some, um, you know, more private uh, showings uh, off site uh, that if we have people that are interested in, in finding out more about what we do, uh, it's, it's going to be, you know, more depth and more detail about what, what we offer and less more kind of ubiquity um, to it where, um, you know, if you're interested in metric, we want you to kind of take the time. They spend maybe spend 30 minutes an hour to get into kind of the depth of what we're doing. So, so you understand that. Otherwise it's, it's easy when you exhibit at, the, at, at a convention, I think that people are just running around browsing and, and, and unfortunately the quality of the, of the discussions, um, the caliber of, 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 of what you want to present, it, it, you know, suffers uh, because of that. It's more kind of speed dating. Um, so, so we have we have taken we have taken making the decision that we we are going to 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 do it that way instead. I think that's a clever approach, actually. Um, yeah. well, I would like to say is thank you very much, Martin. It's been a pleasure chatting with you, and uh, well, I look forward to catching up when I'm at uh, G2E Las Vegas in a few weeks' time. So. Uh, Fantastic. Try and stay out the sun. <laughs> Don't look like <laughs> <laughs> much appreciated, Peter. Thanks. Thank you so much for this interview and uh, all the best.